Hey guys, Level Cap here, and today in gaming, info about Battlefield 6's reveal trailer leaked, Respawn are making big changes to Apex Legends, CSGO has a massive exploit, and much more. It's a new day, which means new Battlefield 6 rumors. Tom Henderson is back at it, and this time he's dishing trailer info. According to Tom, the reveal trailer for Battlefield 6 will showcase a desert island map. Tom has said previously that weather in Battlefield 6 will cause dynamic destruction. So if an earthquake or a tornado rolls through a map, buildings and other terrain will be destroyed. We've seen this in past Battlefield games like Battlefield 4's Paracel Storm map, but nothing that's been totally dynamic. Tom cobbled together a drawing that he says represents the look of the trailer. It shows a formation of Ospreys which he says will be pilotable. Other Twitter users have replied with mock-ups based on Tom's drawing, giving us a clearer sense of what he's saying. One that stood out compares the drawing with Cape Canaveral, the launch site NASA uses for many of their launches. Obviously, I cannot stress enough that this is all pure speculation. Tom has been the source behind about 99% of Battlefield 6 rumors. The notion that one person has access to all of this information says he's either guessing, has a legitimate source at DICE, or once signed an NDA that he's currently breaking. Whatever the case might be, don't base your expectations for what the game will be on Tom's word alone. The reveal for this year's Battlefield game will likely happen next month. It will probably be a cinematic trailer showcasing a vertical slice of the game and or its campaign. Then in June, we'll get a proper gameplay reveal as part of EA Play Live. That's historic historically been how DICE and EA have revealed Battlefield games. Really, the only important question is, how good will the game be at launch? EA have three studios working on Battlefield 6. DICE Sweden are the leads with DICE LA making live service content, and Criterion assisting the Swedish devs in some capacity. EA gave them an extra year to finish the game as well. Hopefully all this means we'll be getting a well put together and polished experience at launch. Respawn are planning some significant changes for Apex Legends with its next major balance update. Lifeline's abilities, in particular, are getting tweaked. Currently, Lifeline has a passive ability that lets her revive one teammate at a time using her heal bot. The developers are planning to remove the bot's revive shield. The shield is powerful because it forces enemies to close the distance and stop the revive if they don't have grenades. The developers are also speeding up Lifeline's tactical heal by 60% and buffing her care package to always offer an upgrade over your current gear. These changes should make Lifeline's auto-revive a bit riskier, but make her a stronger support character overall. It's unclear when this balance update is going live. Season 9 will likely introduce a new legend called Blisk to the game that can call in an auto titan as his ultimate ability. He was data mined recently and the developers confirmed Titanfall fans will have a lot to look forward to with the next season. PlayStation 3 owners are saying they can't download essential updates for select games. The games include Journey, Battlefield 4, Gran Turismo 5, and other popular titles. What makes this a big deal is that the PlayStation Store for the PlayStation 3 is going offline in July. Without these updates, users can't play these games online. Sony said despite the store shutdown, users will be able to re-download and continue playing any games they own. But if that shutdown makes it impossible to download important updates, it could be devastating for players. Just because the PlayStation 3 is old hardware doesn't mean Sony can turn it into a paperweight. Hopefully they'll figure out a solution. Exploit hunting group Secret Club revealed Valve's source engine has a serious problem. Hackers can steal player data using Steam invites on community servers. Secret Club says this issue has been present for years, despite being reported directly to Valve multiple times. It's particularly dangerous for games like CSGO or Team Fortress 2 since both of those games have huge communities hosting their own servers. Secret Club says Valve are blocking them from publicly disclosing the exploit, which would be fine if the developers actually did something about it. It seems likely that the attention their post is getting will encourage Valve to take action. Outriders players on PC are saying the game's crash logs are taking up gigabytes of space. Players have been running into issues with their C drive, which is typically where Outriders would be installed, filling up when playing the game. A user on Reddit thinks it might be the game's crash logs. Going to a specific folder on your C drive will give you access to these logs. There, you'll probably find that they take up just a few hundred megabytes at most, but it sounds like some users are getting a bug that massively inflates the size of these logs. Deleting the file should be fine if you're running out of storage space. 
Diablo 2 Remaster Technical Alpha kicked off over the weekend and players have already discovered an item duplication glitch. Following a specific sequence of actions, players can infinitely duplicate any item they want. The Diablo franchise is infamous for this type of exploit, so it's no surprise players have already found one. Just don't expect it to be in the game at launch. Nintendo are going to be focusing more on original titles from now on. The company's president recently said in an interview that competition is tough in the game industry today because gamers only have a finite amount of time to play. Nintendo will be more focused on making interesting and original games in the future while releasing new titles in their classic franchise like Mario and Zelda. Nintendo have always had a healthy roster of third-party titles to fill out their library of games with every console generation, but the Switch has proven to be their most popular platform ever for third-party games. Even big AAA titles like The Witcher 3 and Doom have gotten the Switch ports that hold up quite well with their more traditional PC and console versions. It sounds like Nintendo have recognized how popular those titles can be and are getting into the mix with games outside of their wheelhouse. Resident Evil Village is apparently part of a trilogy that will end with the next game in the franchise. Resident Evil 7 and 8 are directly connected according to leaks and a little bit of info that we've gotten from trailers so far. Most Resident Evil games share characters or story elements, but they're rarely direct sequels to each other. They all fall under the same narrative umbrella, pun intended, but tend to focus on different things from one game to the next. 8 will be a direct continuation of 7's story and Resident Evil 9 will wrap that story up. Up. Capcom's release schedule and production roadmap leaked as part of the devastating cyber attack on the company a few months ago, so it seems very likely that these leaks are accurate. Bloomberg recently published an article talking about how Sony shot down a potential sequel for Days Gone. Over the weekend, we learned that the sequel would exist in a shared universe and offer co-op gameplay. Co-op was originally planned for Days Gone, but had to be scrapped to get the game launched. The sequel would have built on the original game's story, world, and characters, but as a co-op multiplayer experience and not a story-driven single-player narrative. Before we get to our final story today, I just wanted to say thank you for tuning in. It's nice to see so many people dropping by in the comments and watching our content. And if you're watching but haven't subscribed, consider subscribing. It really helps us out and ensures that you don't miss any big stories. A couple of days ago, we reported that players had discovered a proper PC port of Time Splitters 2 buried in Homefront The Revolution. Using specific cheat codes, it's actually possible to play the entire game. At first, it was assumed that it was on purpose, but as it turns out, Homefront's developers only intended for Time Splitters' first two levels to be accessible. They included the full game in Homefront to actually make it just easier to implement as an Easter egg, but softlocked it so players couldn't run through the entire game. The funny part of this is that they forgot Time Splitters 2 has a bunch of cheat codes for skipping and unlocking levels. So the cheat codes in Homefront are actually the original cheat codes for Time Splitters 2, not codes Homefront developers implemented as part of the Easter egg. And that wraps it up for today in gaming. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll catch you next time. This is Levelcap, signing off.